Hey folks, welcome back. So this week we are starting into stage one of getting the cattle waters installed here at the farm. Now, step one is to get these concrete, precast concrete pads installed at each one of the locations that the water is gonna go at. Now, to handle these things that weigh about 3,000 pounds each, we had to get in another piece of equipment, and that is a telehandler, or you might call it a all-terrain forklift. And the reason for that is just that the skid steer it doesn't quite have the lift capacity and then in addition to that it doesn't have the the necessary distance from the cab of the machine to hang or to suspend a seven foot across precast pad it, it just doesn't have that depth that you would need in order to move it around especially if it starts swinging a little bit you don't want that smashing through the the glass on the front of the cab so our local farm store uh, was able to get these in and then deliver them out to the farm and again because these things are so heavy they weren't able to do all nine of them at once so they had to break that into two trips out here and then we were able to use the telehandler to lift those off and then set those off to the side. Now, a cool thing about the telehandler is it actually has three different steering modes. Now, the first is just how you would expect where the rear wheels stay stationary and your front wheels can turn side to side. Now, your second one is where your front wheels and your rear wheels will turn in opposite directions. And this allows you to get a really tight radius turn uh, if you need it, which for around here was actually really nice in some of the areas. Then the third mode, which I'll kind of show later, is called crab walk, where your front and rear wheels will turn in the same direction. Now when you do this, it keeps the machine pointed in the same direction, but it moves the entire thing left and right diagonally depending on which way you have your wheels point. And that did come in handy in one of the locations, but it's not something that you really, really need on a regular basis, at least not for what we were doing. Now laying the pads was pretty easy. Uh, my dad had already done a lot of work getting them all prepped and getting that seven by seven area nice and flat, nice and level, ready to go. So all we had to do is just come up, line up the hole in the concrete pad with our tube that's coming out of the ground where our pipe comes through. Just get those lined up, lower it down on there, and we're good to go. Now, depending on which way you want the water facing, uh, the hole in the pad is not centered. So we kind of had to make sure that we were putting it down in the right direction. But other than that, it was really smooth sailing putting these things in. Now for the seven of these pads that are on this side of the creek, uh, because the machine itself weighs around 22,000 pounds, plus another 3,000 pounds for the pad, 25,000 pounds total, we weren't gonna take that across the bridge. Uh, I probably would have ended up in the creek. So we ended up going across our little creek, creek crossing or the ford and driving each one of those through there uh, so we didn't take any chances of falling into the creek anyways uh, by going across the bridge.
Now, in addition to this being really, really heavy, uh, it's actually about a foot and a half or maybe even closer to two feet wider than what your average pickup truck is. So I had to be really careful in a couple areas because the cab of the machine is on the left side. So you're kind of facing like right behind that left wheel. So it's not real easy to tell where that right wheel is, but it's sticking over another foot and a half or two feet further than what you might expect it to be. So if you're driving with your left wheel right down one of the kind of the tracks that we've got around here, one of the little paths, you gotta keep in mind that that other wheel is sticking out a couple feet further than it would normally if you were just driving a truck. So going through like beside the farmhouse and a couple other places, you really had to watch it and, and be watching in your mirrors to make sure you weren't running into stuff. And we still had probably a foot of clearance on either side, but it's not a whole lot when you're driving something that big. Now, for the water that's all the way in the back of the farm on the far side of the Mountain Valley Pipeline right away, uh, again, this was kind of a tricky one because the little roadway going up through there was, well, it, it fits a truck nicely, but for this, it was a little wide and you really had to be careful that you didn't get your downhill side of the uh, machine too far over there. And it was a little, little wet, so you just had to take it easy, make sure you got around all the trees real well and and didn't run into any of those because it, it was a little tight. Now, once we get up here to the Mountain Valley Pipeline right away, you'll actually see that that is all nice and seeded now. They've actually come through, they've gotten the pipe in, uh, they got the topsoil back across and they got it seeded. So we no longer have this big dirt patch going across uh, the farm. That's all seeded back in. And then hopefully within another couple of years, we might be able to finally get cattle back on there. So here is the example of doing crab walk. Unfortunately, of course, it's not moving. You're just seeing it stationary, but you can see that the wheels are turned in the same direction. And this spot was a little tight for getting into. I could have set the pad down and then rehooked onto it 90 degrees from the direction that I had hooked the chain onto it. But I figured it'd just be just as easy just to kind of crab walk it into position, get it going the right way and do it that way. It turned out being really handy in that spot, but I think this might've been the only, only place that I ended up using that. So we're now onto the very final pad. And this was the second day that we'd worked on it. Uh, we mainly were just out there in the afternoons doing it. So realistically, we could have done them all no problem in one day if you'd started first thing and, and gone till dark. Uh, that would have been been very doable, but we worked a couple afternoons, got them all knocked out. And this one we ended up finishing in the dark a little bit, so it was a little harder to see and get everything lined up. But we really didn't want to just leave one left to do the next day, so we just decided to get that knocked out and have that project done. I just figured out how to get the, the orange flashing light on. I'm so happy, this is awesome. <laughs>
All right, so that is stage one, we'll call it done. And the next step is to get the waters in, which we have those at the farm here. And all we need to do now is take those to each spot and get the pipe connected into that and test it, make sure everything works. Uh, I don't know if that video will be out next week or not. Depends how quickly we get these done, but it should be out no later than two weeks from this video. So I think that is it for this week's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you next time.